All right, so uh, I kind of wanted to just sort of keep this up. Uh, have a few more logarithmic examples. I think it's kind of a complicated thing. So more ex the more examples, the better. So I've got eight problems here on the uh, trickier side of things, just to show you, yeah, kind of some possible ways to uh, to solve this. So for example, all right, uh, we actually closed the last video with this, but we'll just start off with it again. Log base one half of 16. Again, you can think about this as one half to what power is 16. You then notice, well, one half is really two to the power of negative one. And 16 is two to the power of four, which is to say negative x must equal four. You can just cancel out the bases and say, okay, negative x is four. And so x actually equals negative four. So this equals negative four. What about this one? Again, we note, uh, since there's no base, we actually notice that this would actually be a base 10. So this is asking 10 to what power is one over 100? Um, this one's a little bit easier. Uh, one over 100, well, 10 squared is 100. And since this is one over 100, this is actually gonna be 10 to the negative two. So it's saying 10 to, the, 10 to what power is 10 to the negative two? That means x must equal negative 2. So this is negative 2. All right, moving right along. Uh, we got number 3 here. 25, log base 25 of 1 over 125. So this is saying 25 to what power is 1 over 125? You might notice 25 and 125, those are powers of 5. And so this is actually going to be 5 squared x equals five to the negative three. It's a fraction, so it's gotta be negative, and five to the power of three is 125, so five to the power of negative three is one over 125. In this case now, we have our bases, they cancel, our powers can be multiplied, so uh, five to the power of two to the power of x is really, you know, you can just say two x. So we're gonna say two x must equal negative three, in which case x equals negative three halves. So this answer is negative three halves. This one's kind of hard just simply because of uh, the size of the numbers, but it's asking 36 to what power is 1,296? Well, this is six squared, by the way. And this is in fact six to the power of four. So this is two X equals four or x equals two. So 36 squared is actually 1,296. So this one was a little more straightforward. All right, now we're getting into some tricky ones that look hard, but in fact are incredibly easy. For example, log base three of three to the power of 10. Now, if you wanna put three to the power of 10 in your calculator, you can. However, the answer is gonna be huge. You don't need to. This is in fact much simpler than that. So let's just rewrite it as an exponential. This thing is saying three to what power is three to the power of 10? Well, that's really easy because if I've written three to the power of X equals three to the power of 10, that must mean X is 10, which means this is simply 10, which kind of makes sense because if you're taking a logarithm of an exponential, that's like adding something and then subtracting it or multiplying by something and then immediately dividing by it. You're, you're doing an operation and then doing the inverse operation. Here, your operation is logarithm, and then in the inside, the, log, the operation is exponential. And logarithms and exponentials are exactly opposite of one another. So they actually cancel each other out, and we just get 10. What about this one? Well, this is written as an exponential. Yes, it has a logarithm in it, but it's actually written as an exponential. So one way to do it, or one way to think about it, is to actually rewrite this as a logarithm. So if I were to rewrite this as a logarithm, I would say log base of the exponent is the base of the log, so this is log base four. What the exponent equals is what goes inside the logarithm, and what the exponent is is what the logarithm equals. So just looking at this now, log base four of x equals log base four of 12, it's pretty obvious what x is. x 
must just be simply 12. And you're done. Let's try another one of those. Um, well, actually, let's go back to another logarithm with an exponential on the inside. This one doesn't immediately cancel out because notice up here it was log base 3 and then what's inside was 3 to the power of 10. Here it's log base 9 and then what's inside is has a base of 3. So these things don't match up perfectly, but we obviously understand that there's an exponential connection between 3 and 9. So let's write this as an exponential, okay? So what we're asking here is we're saying, all right, 9 to what power is 3 to the fifth? Well, I know 9 and 3 have a connection. 9 is, in fact, 3 squared. And so 2x must equal 5, or x equals 5 halves. Right, that kind of goes back to what we were, oops, sorry, I did not realize that was off the screen. That sort of goes back to um, what we were doing before. So let me just re reiterate here. So 9 to what power is what's inside? So 9 to what power equals 3 fifths? We know 9 is 3 squared. And so this is where we get our 2x must equal 5. 2x must equal 5. Divide both sides by 2, and we get 5 halves. Last one. Here's another one that's an exponential, but it has a logarithm on the inside. So actually, let's rewrite this whole thing as a logarithm. A logarithm says, all right, so if this thing was equal to x, this would be, say log base 5, log base 5, right? Log base 5 of x equals log base 25 of 6. All right, so this is going to be a little tricky, right? What you're basically asking here is you're saying 5 to what power, is, 5 to some power is x, right? Um, so what's the connection here? Well, so if I'm saying, okay, this one right here, 5 to this power, 5 to some power, right, is in fact x. And this one is saying 25 to that exact same power is in fact 6. That's what that's saying, right? Where the two question marks are the same. 5 to some power must be x, but this is saying 25 to some power must be 6 to that same exact power. Well, I know 5... And I understand that 25 is really 5 squared to some power, must be 6. So if I take 5 squared and I raise it to a power and I get 6, what would happen if I just took the 5 and raised it to the power? This one's going to be kind of tricky for you to catch on to. But basically, what this is saying is it's saying, okay, look, I'm only taking 5. I'm not taking 5 squared. So I'm not squaring it and getting 6. I'm just taking the 5 and getting what? Well, if I took it and I didn't square it, what would I end up with? I should have ended up with the square root of 6. Okay, so this one is particularly difficult. But if you caught that explanation, that's pretty impressive. Um... We'll do a couple more like that, but that one's kind of a tricky one. Uh, I will rarely give you anything that difficult, but that was kind of a fun, uh, interesting little side note. All right, but what is the whole point of all of this? The whole point was, at the very beginning, uh, I mentioned the fact that what we want to do is we want to be able to solve the geometric sequence, right? Now, for example, if I gave you the first term of something is 5, the rate is 2. What term is 5,120? We'll set up the um, explicit formula. This means 5,120 must equal 5 times 2 to some power minus 1. Divide both sides by 5. That cancels. Divide this by 5, right? This is going to be um, 1, 124, and this is going to be 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now we get to look at this as a logarithm. This is now log base 2 
of 124 equals n minus 1. Okay, so on your homework, you might have noticed that I gave you uh, something called a change of base formula. I'm going to teach you two, two different things here. If you have a TI-84 or better, what you can do is oftentimes under the math uh, button, that stuff doesn't, you find this thing, log base. That means I can actually change the base. So notice when I hit that, I get a little log. I can write the base down. I want two. Wait. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's it. Sorry about that. That was silly of me. Not 100, ugh, man, that was bad. There we go, 1,024. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna just skip that back up, 1,024 like that. Sorry about that. And so I get 10. So this is 10. So 10 equals n minus one, and so n must equal 11. So this up here must be the 11th term. Okay. So that's how you can solve logarithms on your calculator. But what if you don't have this calculator? What if you have one that only has a log button um, that's base 10? Well, what you have to do is you have to use the change of base formula. And on your paper, you might notice it. I've, I've written it on your homework, but the change of base formula says log base A of B equals log of, oops, log of B over log of A, like so. So if I wanted to type this in without using my change of base button on this calculator, but um, what I could do is I can basically say, okay, this is actually log of 1024 divided by log of two, like so, and that's 10. So notice how we get the exact same thing. So that's using the change of base formula. Let's do uh, another one like that. Let's actually do the one that um, we actually started this whole thing with. So I gave you 16, 24, 36, dot, 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 and then somewhere down the road, 729 fourths. First off, you know your first term is 16. You know your rate must be any term divided by the term before it, which ends up being three halves. So we know that 729 divided by four must equal 16 times three halves to the power of n minus one. Divide both sides by 16. There we go, we get 729 over 64 equals three halves to the power of n minus one. In other words, logarithmically, this is log base three halves of 729 divided by 64. And what does that actually equal? That's gonna equal n minus one. So I'm gonna use, I'm not gonna use the, um, the special button on this one, I'm just gonna use the change of base formula. This means that it's log of 20, 729 over 64. So 729 divided by 64. Then I'm going to divide that whole thing by the log of, so divided by log of, and this time it's just 3 over 2. Right? And what is that? 6. So 6 equals n minus 1, and so n equals 7. Meaning this must be the 7th term. All right, um, so I'm kind of expecting to have to go over this again, not a problem, uh, but see what you can do and uh, ask me questions during the um, Zoom meeting that we'll have later this week. Uh, thanks and good luck.